This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Ferris. Who that boy? Who him is? Bueller? Fearless? They really ought to do one game of baseball where they play with potatoes. <laughs> oh, hey, if you're feeling the pinch at the grocery store, why don't you try cereal for dinner? Okay. Which, by the way, we were all just dripping in sweat. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stupidest thing yeah. you can do during yeah. a tornado. IFAF, Idaho Falls Weekly Informal Infotainment, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on this episode, we say the word pajajays. I'm going to put that in there somewhere. <laughs> okay. Um, talk about our split pea and honey baked ham soup. Great way to use your Easter leftovers. Kristen Wiig and the new Target ads. Mm -hmm. What are the ice chuckers? Corporate price gouging? The <laughs> solar always. eclipse? Mm -hmm. What um, classic rock band is coming to East Idaho? Ooh, that's exciting. Cheech and Chong bagging on Idaho again. Can't say I blame them. Idaho Falls City Hall getting one of these for the first time ever. Ooh. Did you know something big happened in Spokane 50 years ago? Also, a cool kid from Rigby did a cool thing on this cool show. Ooh, sounds cool. You may have heard of it, The Tonight Show. <laughs> also, we'll talk about The Vibrator Play and the Idaho Falls Chamber of Commerce 120th. Well, there was Easter, and then this past weekend, General Conference. Hope mm -hmm. you feel all filled up. Yeah, with a little bit of Jesus. And a little bit of honey-baked ham split pea soup. Yeah, right? Oh, that was so good. You did such a great job on that. I did it. You did. I made split pea soup. It was insanely easy. Right. I, had, I was under the impression that it was really, really difficult. Oh, really? Yeah. You just boil the ham hock for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then you add in all the other stuff, the split peas. Yeah. Big old giant bag. I made a double recipe. Ooh, ooh la la. Well, you start with a mirepoix, mm -hmm. which is a fancy French word for a combination of three things. Onion, celery, and carrots. Oh, yeah. That's a mirepoix. It's the start mm -hmm. to several famous soups. Right. Then you throw in the split peas. Yeah. And at the very end, you Scarborough fare the hell out of it uh -huh. with parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme, there we go. And celery salt. I mean, yeah, that's all great. That's all you need. Yeah. Oh, and, and if you want to do it on the cheap, cheap mm -hmm. for honey baked ham anyway, you can go get a ham hock for like 20 bucks and a pound of ham for 15 bucks. Right. You don't need to buy a whole entire $50 honey baked ham. Mm -hmm. Although you can get more meals out of it if you do do it that way. Yeah. Because then you can have ham first one night and then a few nights later mm -hmm. you can have some split, some split pea soup. I'm so sick of ham at this point that I yeah. froze the rest. <laughs> well, and last night at the Chamber of Commerce thing, they offered <laughs> ham again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we'll talk about them a little bit later. That was a fun time. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, you know, when I was a kid, I used to really love General Conference Weekend. Because you could go to church in your pajajays. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you know? And, you know, I was such a nerd that I was like, yay, more church. Because mm. <laughs> you get two days of church instead of one day of church. Right. But it was nice because it was on the TV, right? Um, but we'd always get to like, just sit in front of the TV and listen while we like doodled and stuff like that, which was nice. Um, and then when I got older, I actually went on a date for general conference where I went over to this guy's house and we watched general conference together. And that was our date. And didn't you fall asleep? Was we that did. the time you fell asleep? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. We fell asleep on his, uh, <laughs> His big beanbag, the love sack one. And I'm sorry, but <laughs> maybe church leaders can kind of work on. There's often times, and I'm not just talking about the general conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Right. I'm talking about any church, yeah. anywhere, except maybe Southern Baptist, uh -huh. yeah. where it's just, there's this sort of monotone delivery, <laughs> right. and the points are being made one by one, uh -huh. and let us all be state and stately mm. and somber. Yeah, it's definitely got a very specific cadence yeah. that if anyone were to replicate it, it would kind of give me like shivers down my spine. Like that's not like it's sort of uncanny. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like you're not supposed to be using that. What are you doing? And and I get it. There's different deliveries in every walk of life. Lawyers have a certain yeah cadence, right? Just like poets and politicians do too. Radio DJs, yeah. Auctioneers, yes. That's a fun one. Uh, and hard to replicate that one too. It is. It's yeah. tough. I've tried. Can't do it. <laughs> I know Phil Bates does a really good job mm -hmm. if you need an auctioneer. Oh, and uh, as we found out at the Snake River Animal Shelter Furball, Mario right. from he was Teton pretty good too. Toyota does a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of, car salesmen totally have a certain cadence too. Uh huh. Yeah. 
NPR podcasters. Yes, that's a good one. There's a great Family Guy bit. Mm -hmm. I, you can probably tell these past episodes I'm rewatching Family Guy again. <laughs> Boy, those early episodes before, say, season 10 when they went HD. Yeah. Woo! Edgy. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Don't little cut bit. yourself on that edge. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, you know, and speaking of cadences, uh, assholes like you and me with our own little podcast. Yeah, we. I have noticed we have a certain cadence. Yeah. And I try to edit along. You'll hear edits during the show, and that's basically when I go, <clears throat> <clears throat> Right. Um, <laughs> and we try to cut, you know, most of that stuff out. Yeah, or when I yawn. I'm always yawning, dude. I'm just a tired girl. <laughs> we try to keep the studio at a chill 69 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which does really help. I know. I think Letterman kept his studio at like 66. Yeah, I could see that. Because things were always funnier when it was colder. Right, You know, right. your body's got this sort of, not fight or flight, but... Um, kind of built up energy. Yeah, it's yeah. in stress mode trying to create heat. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. So I think you're more likely to laugh. I don't know if mm -hmm. that's true or not. Well, and not only that too, but like those studio lights get so hot that live studio audience is giving off body heat mm -hmm. the entire time. Plus he's wearing a full suit, like... You know, unless you wanted sweat <laughs> sweat stains underneath your stuff, you had to keep it cold. Right. You know? Thank goodness for LED lights. Right. Didn't the Civic just replace, in the last couple few years, didn't oh. they just replace all their lighting with LEDs? Oh, yeah. 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 I know that when I did the um, the Guys and Dolls for Sound Summer Musical, new one, King and I, coming up mm -hmm. later this year, by the way, soundsummermusical.org, uh, that the lights were all LED. Right. And so it, well, I didn't, you know, you didn't get that melty makeup feeling right? that you used to get. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, <laughs> everyone's upper lip is just white and the rest yeah. of their face is tan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. While we're on follow-ups, let's just talk about the two things we did this mm -hmm. past week. They were a lot of fun, starting with the uh, play at the Artie, the Actors Repertory Theater mm -hmm. of Idaho. Mm -hmm. Also known as the Phoenix. Yes. Yeah. Right next to the Auditorium. Uh -huh. That's the big sign on Broadway mm -hmm. that you see right off of the Yellowstone Highway. Right. But yeah, that was In the Next Room, a.k.a. the Vibrator Play. And it was so fun. Would you like to know what it was about? <laughs> 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 so it's set in 18 in the 1800s 1880 ish and basically it's about the old timey cure for hysteria <laughs> yeah um which you which know which plugged in back then they didn't have yes. batteries yeah can you imagine having to find an outlet mm -hmm. you know <laughs> just having to run around the house until you found somewhere <laughs> that you felt kind of secure but was also close enough to an outlet you still have to for what i understand is one of still the most popular vibes uh today mm -hmm. featured in a sex in the city episode uh-huh so miranda's baby samantha was babysitting mm -hmm. and she didn't know how to calm the baby down you know the little baby rockers oh yeah uh-huh um i think she put the magic wand in the baby rocker and the baby just fell right asleep but um i i've okay i've heard that some women still i've seen the memes they still uh -huh. swear by the hitachi magic wand even mm -hmm. though as i understand it Hitachi discontinued it, right? But it's still being manufactured by somebody else under the same name, or so oh. they've licensed it out, kind of. Interesting, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's a popular neck massager. Yes, I'm sure. It is. I'm sure it would be. Anyway, take a look at the stage here. You'll see that on the left is the doctor's house where uh -huh. he lived with his wife. Yeah, like the main room of it and the new baby. Mm -hmm. And then to the right is the operating theater. Uh huh. I guess a lot of doctors, you know, had their offices. Right, in their homes. In their homes back yeah, in the day. Which made sense. Or would make house calls. It, I was just going to say, especially because <laughs> they'd usually make house calls. Yeah. Yeah. And so the action happened either in the living room of the doctor's home mm -hmm. or in the operating theater. But it was, it was a really... I was surprised. It had a heart. Right, right. It wasn't just about vibing all day. No, no. It was actually surprisingly romantic, too. Uh-huh. And very sentimental. Yeah. Which I really appreciated. It was about, let's see, sexual repression uh -huh. and femininity. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised slash impressed with the nursemaid soliloquy toward the end. Yes. That really was really well good. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think a lot of it also had to do with... um. You know, being open and honest with your partner, too. Right. You know, being fully present with them. There, were there a couple of love triangles? 
there were that developed. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting. It talked it, like it. It definitely sort of dissected gender roles in a really interesting way. And the catering from Bee's Knees was. Oh, I love the catering from Bee's Knees. What was They're it? They're always like- so good. It was a pina colada chicken. Yeah. Which I thought was Yum. so fun. And they also did um, special drinks. Oh, yeah. To go along with the play, too. I took a shot of this. Look at these. They had specialty drinks like the Chattanooga Operating Room mm-hmm. and Hysteria. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I thought was a really cool one. I especially like that that one had cucumber in it. <laughs> I thought that was sort of funny. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, now the one thing that I was a little uh, bummed out by was that it was touted as having partial nudity, and I didn't see a damn thing. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Yeah, I think what they were referencing is that at one point the wet nurse um, nurses the baby, but you don't see anything when she does it. She just sort of unbuttons and then covers. Um, I wonder if at a very specific angle you might have, but I feel like you would have had to be on stage. I, well, yeah, I specifically remember during that scene, I thought it was kind of hilarious mm-hmm. because right where I was sitting, mm-hmm. right where the actress on the stage was sitting in between us was the back of somebody's head. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And I just thought it was God coming down from heaven and censoring my view in real time. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think so. Oh, Mike, no pervin on that. <laughs> right. Come on. <laughs> As if it's you would have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And also, get a more realistic looking baby. It's not hard. It was okay. It was no, all right. It, it looked like something from Walmart, dude. It's like such a standard baby doll. And I know, because when I was a kid, I had a couple of them, but they make very realistic looking baby dolls that like flop around like real babies. Like they look super real. <laughs> baby and flops not, a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's the thing. They're not that expensive. They're expensive, you know, they're like probably a hundred bucks ish. Okay. But you know, you can get one used. You know what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll consider donating one of my old ones. <laughs> you, I'll donate a live one. <laughs> Kidding. You you knew we couldn't get through this without giving at least one note, Artie. Yeah, because we love them. Right. Yeah. Exactly. If we didn't love you, we wouldn't we wouldn't give you a note. <laughs> the other thing we attended this past weekend, they sort of let their hair down for this, dressed up because the theme was speakeasy soiree. Mm-hmm. So it was a 1920s, roaring 20s mm-hmm. style party. And here's where the Chamber of Commerce got it right. First of all, it was a great value. It was 40 bucks. Yeah, which is really good because you got some great food out of it. Right. Catering by mm-hmm. A Street Soup Market. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was yeah. great food. And man, you know, Asian Supermarket really has done... <laughs> yeah, they did have ham. But they really have made a little bit of a killing lately. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I feel like they've done really well for themselves, especially in the sense that, in general, a lot of restaurants will close down pretty quick. But they're, you know, they're here to stay. Mm-hmm. They've been here for at least, like, what, five, six years now? And every once in a while, they'll welcome the chef from Diablos mm-hmm. for a little, I don't know, brunch style thing. But oh, Which I love so much. Y'all need to do that more. <laughs> so they had ham, but they also had tri-tip sirloin. Mm, which, was which was so good. Great. But here's where the Chamber of Commerce got it completely right. No keynote speaker. Mm-hmm. They had three things. They had drinks, dinner, and dancing. And that was it. Yeah. And that's all you need to have. And it was great. So mm-hmm. they celebrated their 120th anniversary. Mm-hmm. Since 1904. Wow. Man, that's a long time. And they had, what was the band? They had the Jazz House Big Band playing Which jazz they, standards. I definitely think that they uh, completely lived up to their name. They're incredible. Yeah. They were very jazzy. Yeah. And I, <laughs> and I like that kind of stuff. I especially oh, I like it that. when they just sort of, you know, they established, like Mozart was famous for doing. First, you establish the theme mm-hmm. and then you do every single possible variation. I don't know if you've ever right. heard his variations on Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Oh, really? Also known as the Alphabet Song, mm-hmm. also known as Baba Black Sheep. They all share the same tune. Right. But he, you know, basically plays the main tune and then just goes off. Right. Uh huh. Yeah, and they you have did some that. fun with it. Yeah, they had some fun with it. Yeah, well, and I don't know if you remember that scene from La La Land where Ryan Gosling takes Emma Stone to a jazz club. And he's like, and look, like this guy's going to go and he's going to play his little ditty. Yeah. And then this guy's going to take over yeah. and da da da. Like that. Yeah. yeah. And it did get me kind of more into jazz. I was like, all right. Yeah. I yeah, love cool. that stuff. Yeah, but it was great music all night. Aaron, our friend Aaron, who, let's see, you said used to work where? She used to work at Studio One, which is where I did ballet when I was seven. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And she's still at it. I know she mm-hmm. taught us how to do the Shapoopy dance right. in the Music Man a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. she's a local choreographer. I, she does a couple of different things. She apparently also did choreography for Thoroughly Modern Millie, Okay, which is exciting. 
So here she is teaching just a little bit. Watch just a little bit of this. So you touch and you step. And you touch and you step. Now, if you notice with my voice or even with my body, I have a little bounce. I have a little bounce. And if this is too basic for you, you half moon it. Half moon it. Half moon it. Half moon it. Now. Now you switch it. <laughs> and if you missed what she just said, it's keep your knees together, ladies, at least for the dance. <laughs> right. She was funny. She threw out a couple of zippy little one liners. And I don't know if you could see Carly Morgan in her fabulous gold <laughs> flapper dress. The same one that I used for the Taylor Swift party, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Which Finally works. recycled the dress. <laughs> yeah. That's an era. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and how is it that the women just picked up on those dance moves like that? And the yeah, men were kind of, and I got to say, I'm proud of the gentleman who mm-hmm. gave it a good go, but they obviously did not have the dance aptitude mm-hmm. that you ladies had. Yeah. By the, I mean, by the time she was done with her little lesson, I think it was only women on the floor, okay. which by the way, we were all just dripping in sweat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I, I was a little surprised that you didn't hop out there because I know that you'd talked about wanting to maybe practice the Charleston before we went. I would love to have a private tutor and unlimited time to learn to dance. Well, I mean, I did used to dance, if you ever want to give it a go. Okay, all mm-hmm. right. I will start with something sm- sm- small and easy like a uh-huh. waltz. Yeah, yeah. I think you'd be great at, great at a waltz. And then keep going. Plus, I always loved waltz. And I always had to learn the boys part, too, because we never had enough oh. boys. Okay, so, so that you could lead. Yeah, yeah. Help out. <laughs> Which was sort of problematic, though, because then when I was the girl and I was supposed to be uh, following, I'd always want to lead right. to the point where I had to start closing my eyes so that I'd be unsure enough and like feel weird enough that I could actually focus oh. and like let them lead. Okay. It, it, it's yeah. hard to transition roles. It is. Sometimes. It is. But it was it was a cool networking event. We did give out some cards with our, you uh-huh. remember our QR code cards from last time? We were a little too excited, I think, to give them out. <laughs> and and another follow-up too, if we hold this up to the camera uh-huh. and you take a photo of the screen showing the QR code on the video, it still works. Oh, that's awesome. So our grand experiment paid off. That's cool. Nice. But I met John Radford. Now, I always thought it was ICAP, the Eastern Idaho Community Action Partnership. He said oh. ECAP. And I said, which one? He said, either one. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. All right. That's funny. But uh, John, okay. So ICAP, ECAP, Mm -hmm. is a nonprofit that helps families. John really prides himself on taking people, what did he say, from crisis to thriving to service. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. He told me a couple of success stories of people who came and had nothing Mm -hmm. and then, you know, uh, had some success and got so successful that they're, they're now able to help others. Right, which Isn't is sort of the a, ultimate goal. It's a great mission. Yeah. They um, they offer the Head Start program. They help seniors live with dignity and community. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite charities. Yeah. When I have, so I have a list of charities that I recommend to my clients. And at closing, I donate $100 mm-hmm. to the charity of their choice. And if they don't have a choice or a preference, I have a few that I recommend. And mm-hmm. ICAP is one of them. E-cap. Yeah, that's a great one. E-I, I guess it could be ACAP. Uh huh. If EI makes a noise. Yeah, right. <laughs> I also met uh, Vance Shirtliff. He's in holistic physical therapy and he'll come to you. Which is so smart, too. Mybaton at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also, like, what a bummer it is that insurance will only sort of cover some physical therapy. Cause, like, you know, I know a lot of folks who, you know, are disabled or struggling with something like that physically. And they'll start going to physical therapy and they'll feel great. And then all of a sudden, as soon as they're just good enough, insurance will be like, hey, you don't need it anymore. You're good. Yeah. And then they'll just go back into the cycle, you know? The paradox of physical therapy for me, because I've been in it a couple of times. I had a major bone infection when I was like eight. Right. And it's just the hardest thing to accept. Mm -hmm. Your body doesn't get better on its own. You have to hurt yourself 
in order to heal yourself. Mm-hmm. Ow! And it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. Yeah, and, and you know, that's the thing. That's why so many people won't do it when it's just them. Mm-hmm. You know, like... The, yeah, you the, need somebody else. Yeah, to sort of push you. To sort of push you and then mm-hmm. also make you sort of step off when you need to right. and you need to recover from it. Mm-hmm. So thanks, Idaho Falls Chamber of Commerce. That was a fun time. 120 years, woo! Right. More commerce, more business. <laughs> Let's do business and have businessy meetings and <laughs> things. Well, and you Zooms. know, got to support local. Yeah. Uh, that is why you are IFAF this mm-hmm. week. Chris Pie 5. <laughs> 21 finger gun salute. Pew, pew. And chef's kiss. To you. That was great. Uh, looking forward to this Friday, April 12th, the grand opening of the Visit Idaho Falls experience. Right. I'm excited for that, too. I don't, I don't think the Chamber of Commerce is necessarily involved as much as the City of Idaho Falls right. uh, Tourist Board, mm-hmm. whatever. Well, you know, especially because we're working so hard to be a destination now. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And uh, and and maybe even uh, do some Teton T-shirts on up in that store. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, this one available TetonT-shirts.com. It's the classic I Heart NY shirt. Uh huh. Right. In black, only it says I Heart IF. And get yours there. And uh, there's some Pride shirts there too with the little rainbow hearts. But who doesn't like that? Especially with Pride coming up. June's coming up. Yeah, that's only a couple months away. Uh, one other cool thing that happened last week. So the Tonight Show with D- Jimmy Fallon doing a new thing called, I say new thing, let's put it mm-hmm. in finger quotes. Right. New thing, because Letterman did this with stupid human tricks in the 80s. Right. New to him. Fallon calls him, right. show me something good. Right. right. Because we all have to be toxically positive these days. <laughs> that aside, a very cool trick by one Miles McDonald. At what Miles cool name, McDeasy. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He could be like a Spider Man <laughs> yeah. in one of the Spider Verses. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, all you need <laughs> is a name that has some alliteration to it. Mm-hmm. And he's got it. And he's got a cool little trick. So <laughs> he does. Miles McDonald from Rigby showed us his trick, mm-hmm. which was spinning a basketball on the butt end of a toothbrush while brushing his teeth. Which is pretty cool. Now, that being said, wow. He did two warm ups before he got to that. And honestly, I felt like the warm-ups were even cooler. We'll link to the YouTube video on this post if you want to see it. He's the second guy in. The first mm-hmm. gal tries her best <laughs> to make some animal impressions. Her dolphin. Her dolphin was great. It's fantastic. Yeah. It sounds exactly like SpongeBob swearing. <laughs> yes, it yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mad props, Miles McDonald. You're so mm-hmm. talented, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and what he had to—he's got to be like what seventeen? Oh yeah, I probably mean, still in high school. I, so. I guarantee he just got really bored one day and was like, "I'm gonna make this happen." And then he kept doing it because his friends thought it was cool, you know. Until he got so good that he was on Jimmy Fallon. What's the Bruce Lee expression? I don't fear the man who has practiced ten thousand kicks. Right. I fear the man who's practiced one kick ten thousand times. <laughs> right. And it, I bet you he's. I, mm-hmm. If we asked him. I bet he's practiced it at least that many. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Another thing from the internet. (laughs) Remember when we talked about Cheech and Chong's Cruise Chews? Oh, yeah. (laughs) And how they're running ads Mm -hmm. saying they're available in all 50 states. Asterisk. Not you, Idaho. (laughs) Well, the same people, Cheech and Chong, are now bringing you Tommy Chong's CBD still not available in Idaho. And I love that they're using the Charlie Kelly conspiracy meme. (laughs) From season four, episode 10 of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where Charlie has that conspiracy theory. (laughs) Right. You know, it does kind of make you wonder, like, who's funding this anti-pot stuff here in Idaho? You know? Who's who's getting paid to keep pot away from here? Don't you? I don't know. I, I, Like we've said before, I think it's just going to, it's going to happen on a federal Mm -hmm. level. And all that protesting and all that money going toward stopping it. (sighs) will be in vain. Yeah. I'm yeah. not saying I'm advocating for it. I just see the train a coming. Well, and also you can fight it or you can rock out to it. It's coming around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since. <laughs> I don't know when. <laughs> I'm stuck in falls in prison. <laughs> you know, I think you might have a really great country career in your future. <laughs> I'll be the next Beyonce. <laughs> there we go. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> so funny to see her doing country now. 
But have you heard her duet with Miley Cyrus? No, I haven't yet, and I know I need to. Oh my gosh, something about I'll be your mm-hmm. shotgun buddy, right? Your backseat baby. <laughs> or, well, that sounded. Well, is that in there? Anyway, <laughs> it's a great song, mm-hmm. though. Right. Well, and I love that Dolly Parton is now doing like rock and Beyonce's doing country, <laughs> you know? Like- yeah, Beyonce changed the lyrics to Jolene. <laughs> some people are upset about that. And some people uh-huh. are saying Beyonce is the first black artist to, you know, bring, you know, to do country. Have you forgotten about Hootie? Yeah. Darius Rucker. There was a guy in the 70s, 80s, Charlie Pride. Uh huh. Come on. Yeah. Robert Johnson. No, who we, sold his soul yeah. at the Crossroads there've and been, the Delta Blues. Yeah, there have been plenty of black country artists. Before even Hank Williams came along? Well, maybe not plenty, but there yeah. have been some, dang it. Yeah, before Beyonce. We gotta, yeah, we got to acknowledge the few that have come before her. I actually haven't, I didn't notice what lyrics she changed in Jolene. Do you know? Yeah, it's uh, instead of pleading to uh-huh. Jolene, don't take my man, she's saying like, you better not. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's more of a, like a threat. Yeah. More of a yeah. strong black woman vibe. I don't hate it. Which is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's more yeah. of a real housewives. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I kind of dig it. I'm classy. <laughs> I'm classy. <laughs> well, and you know, it's kind of funny too, because I think that Beyonce probably has some personal experience to sort of pull from there, you know? Uh-huh. And like Jay-Z, apparently if you have a name and a letter in your name, then uh, hmm. like R. Kelly, P. Diddy, mm-hmm. Jay-Z, that's yeah. the new one we're hearing a little about, bit about. And we're hearing that... P. Diddy learned his evil ways from Clive Davis, according to Bobby Brown, who oh, wow. okay. dated and married was married to Whitney Houston. Right. Who was a not to be confused with Millie Bobby Brown, prod- <laughs> protege of Clive Davis back in the eighties. Right. Whoa, what a circle! Mm. Fifty Cent still wants to make that documentary. It's gonna get this shit's about to get heavy. I know, right? Yeah, this is the next uh, uh, quiet on set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Also from the internet. Let's face it, our whole show's from the internet. Well, yeah. I mean, which reflects real life. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the Kristen Wiig Target Lady Target ads? So I hadn't until you showed them to me. Okay. And I also hadn't seen the original, you know, bit that she had done. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Uh-huh. If You know, all you got to do is YouTube Kristen Wiig Target Lady. Right. And her Target Lady from SNL was this sort of creepy, freaky gal... Check her at Target, who mm-hmm. would pronounce Target Tiergit. Right, right. Like almost like she was saying tear duct. Uh huh. Only duct was backwards. <laughs> and and she would really, you know, creepily comment on mm-hmm. the purchases people were making. Right. Well, Target now, a decade later, has said, hey, let's, uh, we need something. Yeah. Let's put Kristen Wig. Who also guest hosted uh, Saturday Night Live this past week? Oh, nice! Good for her. Let's put her in the in these new ads. Yeah, which again, you can fight it or you can rock out to it, man. Unfortunately, it falls flat for me. Right, I, I'm not Siskel or Ebert. I do yeah. have two thumbs though, <laughs> and I point them both down for this one because it just it falls flat. It's first of all, she doesn't do the Target Lady. She does this watered down for corporate America lame tame version of the target mm-hmm. lady character. Right. Love Kristen Wiig. Right. Don't get me wrong. How can you not? She's hilarious. Yeah, but they should have gone all the way with it. Mm-hmm. Let her be the weird target lady. Right. But I mean, I guess that's not a great advertisement for Target, is it? Or wouldn't it be? I mean, yeah. Well, I guess if people didn't know it was a bit, you know, if people didn't understand where it came from. Right. Because you know? I know our, we have a short memory in right. this pop culture country. And they were like, why would Target be advertising that their cashiers are going to treat me like this? <laughs> right. You know? She does ask a lot if they're using their Circle app today. Right. I guess, can you get extra savings if you have the I guess. Circle app? You know, as a white woman, I really should know that off you the top of my that. head, but I don't. Ultimately, though, with, with the um, constructive, I feel, criticism that we have offered here today, I also want to mention... Way to go, Target. Mm-hmm. You you hit the zeitgeist in February with your Stanley mm-hmm. Cups. Right. And in April with these ads. Yeah. Yeah, so, they're really on it. And realistically, dude, Target, they're always just going to be the best. Like, everyone loves Target. Everybody loves Target. Yeah. Especially, yeah. especially moms. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but they just... Well, 
not just any moms too, MILFs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, MILFs love a good Target, man. <laughs> I have been to a Target on a weekday. Yeah. And I'm not going to completely argue with you there. Right, right. Yeah. You know, the one time I got followed around Not for Target, that reason. <laughs> You did? I did. You got creeped on? I did. I totally oh. did. So I went in to get some uh, school supplies for college and stuff. And I was just kind of looking around and like through my periphery, I saw this like older guy walk past me and like sort of stop and look at me and then like keep going. But it was just very obvious he was looking at me and I was like, okay, that's weird. Whatever. Well, was it a, a and I'm going to put this in finger quotes, crime of opportunity? I kind of think Was he so. just sort of staring off into space and you crossed his path? No, no, no. I was in the aisle. Or was he, he was, tracking you? He and was tracking me. And okay, here's how I proved Putting stuff away, pretending to not be looking at you. Here's how I proved it. <laughs> okay. And he was just another customer. He wasn't like someone working there. Right. But basically, I went to another aisle. It happened again. And I was like, that was weird. And then I was like, okay, let's do a little experiment. And I sort of like zipped around the aisles in such a way that it would be really hard to tail me if you were doing it casually. And then I ended up in the makeup section and he walked by and the ho- like, as he was starting to walk by, he was kind of doing that thing where he's like looking around with his, oh. like, you know, his head's kind of on a swivel and he locked onto me and I was like, what is going on? So he was shopping, yeah. just not for anything on the shelves. Right, <laughs> right. And after that, I did the same thing where I made it hard for him to tail me. And then I got up to the front uh, to get checked out before he could find me again was sort of my hope. And then he comes around the corner doing the same thing, looking around for me. And I had already started talking to the cashier and I was like, hey, I'm just feeling really creeped out. Like this guy's being super weird. Can someone walk me out to my car? And right then I'm describing him to her and I'm like, oh, there he is. And he makes eye contact with me right as I point at him. Awkward. And the girl looks around too. And he turns tail. Like, you can tell that he looks guilty, you know? I'll tell you, you should have been wearing your Not a Milf t-shirt. I should have been. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he just wanted to know if you were going to use the Circle app. Yeah, maybe he did. You know what? Maybe he had some questions <laughs> about how it worked. Yeah, well, and honestly, I as I need to like, find somebody in the Target, Target demographic. Right, yeah. As a white woman, he was probably like, she'll, she'll know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But he had plenty of opportunities to come up and say something and not be a total creep. But he didn't. A lot of visual stuff on this episode, and this next one is no exception. So a reminder that you can also find us on YouTube mm-hmm. and Facebook. Search IFAF pod. Uh-huh. In fact, now on YouTube, you saw this. You saw it happen. I did. I did. And I was so excited. I typed in IFAF and it was the first result. Uh-huh. I told you six months ago, we're going to beat the international Federation of American Football. Yes. In yeah. search results because it's such a small organization. Right, right. It's for fans of American football outside the US. Yeah. You know, which like there probably aren't very many, let's be football, honest. Football, the pigskin, the oval shaped sports ball, the mm-hmm. Stewie Griffin shaped ball. The Hey Arnold head. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, IFAF can also stand for, I wrote these down, Uh as we know, the Idaho Falls Advertising Federation. Right, right. The other IFAF here in town. Yeah. Uh, And I guess it's all federations. The International Foot and Ankle Federation. Uh Uh-huh. And the Irish Field Archery Federation. Which is the coolest one out of all of them. I'm just going to say it. I want to see that. Yeah, me too. (laughs) We'll we'll have that as a future episode follow-up. I actually love archery. Yeah? So I think that'd be really fun to to check out. You ever seen the one where the girl puts her hands on a stump and does like a handstand and and uses her feet to shoot? Uh Uh-huh. Unbelievable. I know. Isn't that wild? (laughs) Yeah. Freaking cool, dude. Anyway, you know how much I love smart asses on the internet Mm -hmm. and in real life. There's an organization here in town who, quite honestly, often sweeps the other IFAF Gem Awards uh-huh. that I hosted two years in a row, and you accompanied me right. to, to that. The uh, It's IE Productions. Uh-huh. And you might wonder, well, what do production companies do? So let's say you own a business and you want to put some ads on the air. Typically, you'll go to the TV station or the radio station and say, want to put some ads on? And they'll say, great, we can make your ads for you. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest. And I'll just, I'll say this as if it's my opinion. Those ads are typically subpar. Right. They're substandard because they're a perfunctory who, what, when, where, why, how, how often, to what extent Mm -hmm. um, name and phone number at the end, 
Blah, there it is. But if you actually right. want something creative, you go to a production company mm -hmm. like IE Productions or MCS Advertising. Our there friends you know. Steve and Lisa Fishbach there. And there's a few others. I know Porter Pro Media does mm -hmm. a lot of great video that I've seen. Right. I'm partial to IE Productions because I go way back with my buddy Gary Stewart. I think we've mentioned it before on oh, this yeah. show. Um, and there's Chad Hammond. Eggs. Hammond Eggs. Yeah, Chad mm -hmm. Hammond Eggs. There's Max Metama, a brand new. He's Ew. the one who did the Taylor Swift AI. Right, which was so freaky. Deep fake that we played <laughs> a few podcasts yeah. ago. Generational talent. Uh -huh. Really? I think Gary put those words in her mouth. Love but, that. <laughs> um, they, uh, oh, they're the ones responsible. Do you remember when we talked about the Eastern Idaho State Fair Bingham Memorial balloon animal ad at the yes. men's urinal? Oh, which was so brilliant. The caption was, no hard feelings. Right. And he looks so sad. <laughs> wamp, wamp. <laughs> anyway, when they're not busy making creative ads for mm -hmm. clients... They will do creative things on their own. Mm -hmm. I just recently found out that they re they refer to the Spud Kings as the Ice Chuckers. <laughs> Check out these jerseys. Which is kind of funny, actually. <laughs> Look at that. They, they got the logo and everything. They're not selling them. They just made them for themselves <laughs> to have a good chuckle at a Spud Kings hockey game. I love that kind of stuff, though, honestly. Stuff that you just do for your own amusement. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like Which a lot of the shirts the you see me wearing on this show. Yeah. yeah. Like your um, electricity buzz font one, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. Or your... Uh, Park style one. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that we uh, had on last episode. Yeah, that one was fun. If you like South Parks as much as I do, Teton t shirts.com. Ooh, second plug this episode. I know. Wow. Th look that at makes you. up for all the other episodes where I didn't plug anything. There you go. Like Greg Hale does with the Idaho Falls A's shirt. Yes, which is super cool. So, anyway, Mad Props, i.e., Productions. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. We love it. And I think we should steal it. Oh, absolutely. I think it should be the uh, Chuckers uh -huh. coming this summer. Mm -hmm. I think the Spud Kings ought to be the Ice Chuckers. And we, if we ever get another team, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, the lacrosse playing Chuckers. Right, right. We'll just we'll find new little, yeah, new little um, uh, <laughs> adjectives for them. Yeah. Well, and you know, Ice Chuckers almost works on a different level, too, because I just imagine guys like throwing big old chunks of ice at each other. They really ought to do one game of baseball. Where they play with potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you hit that with a bat, man. Yeah. Or like, even if just... No, 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 Funny. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> or even if just the first pitch was done with potatoes instead of balls. And That'd just, be funny. <laughs> just have... Just mash yeah. that potato. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of love that idea. That's hilarious. And then serve it up for $15 at the concession stand. There you go. Uh -huh. Brilliant. You know, just uh -huh. rinse it off, throw some butter on it. You're good. Uh -huh. And speaking of the Mountain America Center, if you're into this sort of thing, Bachman Turner Overdrive is coming during their North American tour, July 22nd. Tickets start at $53. What exactly is that? Do you remember Taking Care of Business? Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you remember You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet? Okay, I'm dumb. No, no, you're not dumb. Because I think they arrived at their ticket price of $53 from the fact that they're a 50-year-old band with exactly three hits. And I just <laughs> named two of them and couldn't name another one. You know? Right, right. Randy, it was three brothers, Randy Bachman and two other dudes mm -hmm. who, are, who have passed on, rest uh -huh. in peace. And his son, Tal Bachman. Uh -huh. Does that name ring a bell? That name does ring a bell. Do you remember the song? She's so high. Yes, I high fucking love that song. Me. She's so love me, lovely. <laughs> I do know that song. Tal Bachman and I actually have a shared moment together. Really? We were together August 11th of 1999. Mm -hmm. Now you might think, Mikey, you have such a terrible memory. How could you remember that date? <laughs> I'll tell you why, Carly, because that was the date of infamy for Salt Lake City. We had an F2 tornado rip through town. Oh, shit. And Yeah. <laughs> well, so there we were in the conference room at Star 102.7, now KSL 102.7, uh -huh. uh -huh. or as the X96 guys referred to it, they would, once we all became the same company, 
Once Bonneville bought us, uh-huh. Bonneville International is basically the, I think I'm saying this right, the broadcast branch of the LDS church. Okay. They bought us all, moved us into the Triad Center where KSL TV is. Mm-hmm. One of the X96 guys thought it would be funny to run through the hallway saying, singing the KSL jingle mm-hmm. um, with alternate lyrics, gay as hell. Uh-huh. <laughs> now look, that was uh, that was back in the nineties, right? Right. When before we developed certain sensitivities, sure, sure. <laughs> and they sang "Gay as Hell" News Radio eleven sixty. <laughs> it's terrible. It's kind of should funny. we even repeat a joke like that? I think we should. Okay, it's okay. It, Please it's- understand. <laughs> I'm making fun of the ignorant times. Right, right. Well, and it's sort of like when they'll show like Looney Tunes cartoons with like the little advisory before like this was made at a different time. There are different sensibilities. Da, da, right. Da. We recognize how hurtful this can be nowadays. Like I, I still think how and I might get crucified for this, mm-hmm. but I still think Disney ought to release Song of the South with that disclaimer. I think so, too. Honestly. Because zippity doo is a jam. It is a jam. That's true. That's true. And I don't You know what? If they're going to remake everything, why don't they find a way to remake Song of, Song of the South so it's not super duper racist? Right. You know, that that would impress me. That is a sequel that I would be excited to see. So there we were in the conference room uh-huh. <laughs> at at Star 102.7 and he was performing She's So High. Mm-hmm. And I, I the only thing I really remember other than what I'm about to tell you about that day is I looked at Tal and I said, "How do you get your hair so it was just really smooth looking. Oh. And he was like, dude, hotel conditioner. Like really? he would get out of the shower, uh-huh. dry and comb his hair, and then just finger comb some conditioner through it. Oh, yeah. I mean, leave-in conditioner is the thing. And that's what I and learned I get that, that trick. that's maybe not leave-in conditioner, but it is technically conditioner that you're leaving in. Yeah. So you always think rock stars have a big budget to do whatever. Mm-hmm. Nope. Finger through hotel yeah. conditioner. I get it. So anyway, there was, come to find out, there was a street fair or expo or I don't know, something mm-hmm. where they had a bunch of tents uh-huh. next to the Triad Center. Oh, really? And, yeah, there's a big parking lot there. Like in 2002, the Dave Matthews Band performed there for the Olympics. Oh, and, cool. You know, they nice. Um, but this F2 tornado ripped through town, caused $172 million in damages. Holy crap. These big white... Tents uh-huh. were ripped from the ground. Well, yeah. <laughs> and they were swirling. So we were right next to the temple. Oh, no. We were uh-huh. at 57 Southwest Temple, I mm-hmm. think, anyway, where Crossroads Mall was and where mm-hmm. um, City Creek is now. Mm-hmm. So you've been right there. Right, right. We're looking out the window with this apocalyptic white stuff swirling over the temple thinking, what's going on? So guess what we all did? What? We pressed our noses up against the window. Hey, guys, come and look. Is everybody seeing this? Take a look. so dumb. <laughs> that, that's the stupidest thing yeah. you can do during yeah. a tornado. Mm-hmm. We didn't know. Well, yeah. Well, and it sounds like you didn't even realize it was a tornado, per yeah. se. Like, you were just like, what's going on over there? But yeah, y'all should have figured it out pretty quick, but okay. <laughs> so Tal Bachman is playing with Randy Bachman on July 22nd at the Mountain America Center. Get your tickets now. <laughs> <laughs> you know... Another funny thing with the whole uh, conditioner thing. So this week I kind of had to refurbish a doll Mm. and um, I was looking up like tutorials on how to fix frizzy doll hair. You're always doing random crafty (laughs) stuff. I know. know. But I was looking up tutorials on how to like fix frizzy doll hair. And one of the, like one of the tutorials was saying you just leave conditioner in the doll's hair and then it looks nice and smooth. But you can Mm -hmm. also do it with fabric softener. And I actually personally think that that works better of the two. But yeah, so I I actually completely just rub some downy in it? Yeah, basically. So I actually completely removed the hair cuz it was sort of on a wig cap type okay. thing that was glued onto the doll. So I just completely ripped it off, shampooed the whole thing, put just a ton of like a mixture of water and uh fabric softener on it, rinsed that off a couple of times and then at the end I sprayed I just like you know, sprayed it on with a sprayer and just left a little film on it and then styled it and did like hairspray and stuff and now it looks great. And but just to be clear, you can't do that with human hair, or you can. You cannot do that with human hair. Okay. I mean, I guess you could, but I don't think it would. I don't think it would give you the results you were hoping for. Right? Yeah. You'd smell fantastic, though. Yeah, you would. That's true. 
it is, we just got done with static cling season. Right. And I would definitely throw in a couple extra dryer sheets from mm-hmm. like December to February. Right, right. Yeah, to keep those sparks from flying. Mm-hmm. Time for a brand new feature. Mike and Carly bitch about corporate gouging. Gas prices up another 15 cents. If you remember last week, they were up 16 cents. Mm-hmm. 367 Attributed to factors like crude oil prices and refinery production levels. <clears throat> yeah, right. And corporate gouging. Yeah. How, I would love to hear from an old person. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Someone with more perspective than me. Over 60, over 70. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we have any listeners that age. We could ask our granny. Because are we just now finding out? Or, or like, you know, we hear about inflation. Right. But then these companies report record profits. Mm-hmm. Let me give you another example. Cereal. Oh. You heard that the Kellogg CEO just suggested, oh, hey, if you're feeling the pinch at the grocery store, why don't you, ha- why don't you try cereal for dinner? I mean, that's, we're getting so close to <sighs> when, when they have nothing to eat, let them eat cake. Right. Marie Antoinette, French Revolution type bullshit yeah, here. Yeah, what a... Fucking moron. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, I guarantee you that guy takes home millions of dollars a year. Well, let's segue from Kellogg's. <sighs> what an asshole. To General Mills, who you in my what? view. I'm going to just quickly say, F- that guy. <laughs> F- that guy in with a big <laughs> break up, beat him over the head with it. F- that guy. What a. D- Lots of editing. <laughs> yeah. You but I, res- I respect your right to say that. <laughs> yeah. I saw a tweet that said General Mills just paid $300 million in dividends to investors, mm-hmm. bought back $150 million in stock to enrich executives and investors, and pay its CEO $16 million. Mm-hmm. It makes $2.1 billion a year in profit, and actually I think it's more than that. Yet it's raising its prices on cereals 20% and blaming inflation. I'm just so sick of this shit, dude. Everything's so much more expensive than it ever has been, you know? Hand me my prop there, would you? Everything's Carly just has more room on her side of the desk, so a she's a massive the- Everything's a way bigger percentage than it than it was before, you know? Before I even knew we were doing this story, I went and bought this box of cereal. It's 12 ounces. Am I right? Mhm. 12.5 ounces of cereal, not even a pound of cereal. 5 bucks. That's insane. Who makes it? General Mills. Mhm. This is why, this is, and by the way, I buy one box of cereal every, th- this will last me three months. Right. You know me, I let, it's a special mm-hmm. treat sometimes late at night. Right, right, with a little bit of almond milk. Pro tip, Honey Nut Checks with unsweetened vanilla almond milk. I think I get the Blue Diamond brand. It's pretty damn good. It's just the best. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Well, and I like that you like Honey Nut <laughs> Chex because my favorite Chex mix, which is the hardest one to find now, and I don't know why. Didn't plan this, by the way. Is the Honey Nut Chex mix. Yeah. You know? Now, to be fair, my favorite thing in it are the Chex. Okay. You know, because they tend to get that nice little powder kind of like, uh, I don't know, pressed into them or something, but they're so good and just Some- the right amount of crunchy. Yeah. Something about the coating on the Honey Nut Chex. Right. With the milk. Yeah. It doesn't give you the chocolate milk that Cocoa Pebbles gives you. Right. But close. Right. It's really nice. It's just a nice now, subtle. That being said, I do think that they need to add a little bit more of that like weird honey powder stuff that they've got in the Honey Nut Checks mix to the regular Honey Nut Checks because that would be delicious. Love it. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is it's just funny how corporations <laughs> keep recording record profits while still blaming inflation. Right. You don't have to really even be smart. Mm-hmm. To figure this one out. You don't. All right. Well, and just frankly, there are things that shouldn't cost that much, too. Like, you you can look at a product and be like, yeah, it shouldn't be that expensive. There's no reason. How much does it cost them to make 12.5 ounces of Honey Nut checks? Certainly not $5. I'm going to say less than a dollar. Probably. Maybe this should be titled the Also on the Internet episode. Sorry if you're just listening. Mm-hmm. Did we plug YouTube already? We did. Okay. You, mm-hmm. you, we've all seen the yellow sign... Heading out of town on the Yellowstone Highway, right before it turns into Highway 26, right before Beaches Corner, right after the Stinker Station, Mm -hmm. that says, warning to tourists, do not laugh at the natives. Yeah, although right now, you can hardly read it on that sign. It's so weather-worn. It's so faded. We need some sign repairs. (laughs) I was on my Mike Helps Idaho Facebook account this week, Uh and I thought, wait a minute, you know, um, 
Where does that sign come from? I'm pretty sure it's owned by Stinker Station. Right. And I was correct. Mm -hmm. And come to find out, they had a ton of these, not mm -hmm. just in Idaho, but other states. Okay, let's back up a step. Uh -huh. Have you ever heard of Burma Shave? Uh, no. Okay. Burma Shave was some shaving cream mm -hmm. that was popular post-World War II. Okay. And they advertised with a series of road signs all in a row. Oh, yeah. Right when the Great American Highway became a thing. Exactly. Yeah. And everybody was in their cars and mm -hmm. taking the Great American Road Trip. So you'd come upon a sign mm -hmm. that would say, does your husband? And then, you know, you'd take a beat. I don't know. Quarter mile. Right. Less, more. The next sign would say, misbehave. Mm -hmm. The next sign would say, grunt and grumble. The next sign, rant and rave. Mm -hmm. The next sign, shoot the brute some. The final sign, Burma shave. So it was sort of a series of signs mm. that when read going 50 miles an hour would create a bit of a poem right. that always ended in Burma shave. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. All right. So then here comes Fearless Ferris. You ever wonder who he is? He's a real guy. Started the stinker stations in the 40s. Mm -hmm. And I think passed away in the 70s. So mm -hmm. for 30 years, he ran these things, built it up to like 150 okay. gas station empire. I think they have wow. 105 stores now mm -hmm. through Idaho, Nevada, and Wyoming, I want to say. But they were prominent all the way through Southeast Idaho. And I think they were sort of signs designed to make the kids in the backseat ask mom or dad, what, is, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Like um, one of them said, nudist area, keep your eyes on the road. Huh. Uh, sheep herders headed for town have the right of way. There was a sign in a field of boulders that said, petrified watermelons, huh. take one home to your mother-in-law. That's funny. Grizzly bear feeding grounds. That mm -hmm. kind of, And I'm putting them up on the video too. With a later start, you wouldn't be here yet. So our warning to tourists, do not laugh at the native sign is mm -hmm. one of hundreds maybe even uh -huh. of these signs and a dude wrote a book about it i just friended him on facebook link in post that's cool i love that if you really really want to find out more about ferris lind uh -huh. who started stinker stations but i if idaho had its own mascot that nobody from almost any other state would recognize mm -hmm. it'd be the stinker station Skunk. Yeah, I'd say so. Wouldn't He's kind of like our Bucky's. It's just sort of our very own hashtag, if you know, you know. Right, right. You know, here <laughs> too. He started in Boise and it just sort of spread. So in particular, in between Boise and Idaho Falls in Southern Idaho. Mm -hmm. Speaking of convenience stores, real quickly, have you heard of this chocolate? Tony's Choco Lonely? I hadn't heard of it before you brought it up. Oh my goodness. Right? It's... So good. It's amazing. Well, and that specific one is the salted caramel one. <sighs> and man, those little bits of sea salt in there are just the right amount of crunch. They're so flaky and delicious. Oh, We try a lot of stuff so on this show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had heard about this chocolate for a couple of years now and just tucked it away, put right. it on the back burner. Oh, yeah. So finally saw it in Maverick the other day. They're mm -hmm. carrying these now. Oh, that's awesome. Highly encourage you to try one. They're mm -hmm. amazing. Talk They're to really Kevin good. about it. He said he likes the hazelnut one. Ooh, we might have to try that then. Cause... And, and I got to try their basic chocolate, but the caramel sea salt, uh -huh. Tony's chocolate only. Oh, and when you open the wrapper, there's all sorts of info on how their chocolate is exploitation free. See, that's really cool. And it's kind of spendy, not going to lie, for mm -hmm. one bar. Here we were bitching about the price of a box of cereal at right. five bucks. Well, this, but at least they can justify This that is cost. six bucks yeah. for one chocolate bar. But it is a big chocolate bar, and it's delicious, too. So Yeah, if you're one of those guys like me that it takes you eh, a week to go through this because you do one bite after lunch or something. Right, yeah. If you just have a little sweet tooth where you just need a little something to get you through the day, that's perfect. Oh, eyes rolling in the back of your head. It's so good. Good. I wonder if the hazelnut one is anything like the Kinder Bueno bar. Oh, yeah. I wonder. You know, because that one's a kind of hazelnut based one, too. I like those. Is it Kinder? Those hippos. The hippos. I know. Those uh, Bueno hippos. Now, are they Kinder or are yeah, they? Yeah, they're Kinder. 
Okay, they're kinder. Yeah, they're like the same stuff as a Bueno Bar, just in a little hippo, and they're so freaking good. The ratio is a little bit better. It's got a little more crunchy right? cookie yes. to chocolate. Yeah, a little bit more wafer to it. Where did you find those? Uh, I found those. I know that the very first time I bought them was at the Shack of Chevron. Okay. Um, but I've bought them at a couple of different gas stations. They're just sort of sprinkled around town here and there. Got to get some of those again. Yeah, those are amazing. I love those. Speaking of sprinkled around town here and there, mm-hmm. um, Idaho Falls City. City Hall is going to get their first elevator. Oh, nice. Yay. That's pretty fun. Thanks to the Ormond Brothers. Or I'm sorry, Ormond Builders. I was thinking Osmond Brothers. <laughs> Ormond Builders and funding from the American Rescue Plan Act. It's a significant upgrade. Mm-hmm. Couldn't we count the number of elevators in Idaho Falls, period, on one or two hands? You know, I was thinking that before, but then I realized we do actually have a pretty significant number of hotels here. That's true. You know, but I would say outside of the hotels around town, all of the ele- all of the other elevators we've got could definitely be counted on just two hands. And most of them have like two buttons. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. floors one and two. You know, I was actually um, watching a couple of kids for a friend the other day and we went to the mall because I was like wanting to make my life harder for some reason. <laughs> uh, and they were like... <laughs> did you go to Dillard's? We did. Okay. Yeah, we, we entered through Dillard's because they always have the best parking. And honestly, Dillard's is like my favorite store there. Mm. Uh, so anyway, we walk in there and the kids are like, oh, can we go on the, the things that go up and down? And I was like, oh, you mean the escalators? And they're like, no, no, the other thing. Oh, you mean the elevator? And they're like, yeah, I've never been on one before. And I was like, buddy, you're seven. You should have been on an elevator before. What? Wow. Yeah, seven and nine, I think. So I was just like, man, okay, well, yeah, let's go take you on an elevator, I guess. Every once in a while, there's that reminder that we still live in a small town, huh? Right, yeah. Not anymore. We're big time, baby. I know, now with our, <laughs> with our what, fifth elevator. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And last thing we'll leave you with, we sometimes talk about Spokane, one of the three capitals of Idaho, uh-huh. Boise, Spokane, Salt Lake City. <laughs> Did you know, didn't hear this, did you know that Spokane once hosted a World's Fair? Oh, I didn't know that. Now, World's Fairs were huge. Oh, yeah. A hundred years ago. Well, yeah, especially before the internet. Like, that was a great way to gather a huge number of people together to sort of, you know, marvel over these new inventions. A lot of times when we watch the foods that built America, they will, Mm -hmm. you know, they will say that, oh, they got their start at the World's Fair in... Right. New York, Chicago, mm-hmm. wherever. There was a big one in Paris in 1900. Right. You know, in the Victor- right before the Victorian age ended. Mm-hmm. But uh, Which I think that's the one where they uh, introduced the elevator. It may have been. I don't know. If I'm know. not mistaken. They I, had, I probably am. They had like, uh, what's the Hindenburg? What What's the generic? The, the, not blimp, oh, but. Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Thank uh-huh. you. They had Zeppelin races. Yes. Through Paris. Which is so cool. <laughs> and, oh, in fact, the uh, Seattle Space Needle was from the World's Fair in 1962. Wow. Okay. So, did you know that Spokane, Washington in 1974 became the smallest city in history to host the World's Fair? Really? Kind of. Okay. As I did some digging to this, because they're celebrating their 50th anniversary of this. That's cool. In Spokane this summer. Mm -hmm. So, maybe that is a reason to go to Spokane. I don't know. I would go. But there's World's Fairs, then there's specialty World's Fairs. It was a specialized World's Fair for International Exposition on the Environment. Which is such a great place to have it if that's what it's about. Because, I mean, you've been to Washington before. Washington is beautiful. It's got a nice environment. Yeah, it does. (laughs) It does. 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 Lots of greenery. Festivities go from May 4th Uh to July 4th, 2024. Join the city of Spokane as they recreate the vibrant spirit of Expo 74. On May the 4th. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. May the Uh, fourth be with you. Oh, yeah. I don't want to miss Retro X2. Come on now. No, can't do that. Got to celebrate that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, well, it snuck up on us. That's our show. Uh, Usually we give you some warning, (laughs) (laughs) but that's it. That's all we got. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, Except for this footage we're going to leave you with of the Jazz House Big Band. Oh, nice. Play us out, Johnny. (laughs) From the Idaho Falls Chamber of Commerce 120th celebration Mm -hmm. this past weekend. Enjoy. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.